Thank you, Drew. It's so nice to be here. Woo. Gosh, I guess it was about, huh, I don't know, 15 years ago-ish, right? If you just subtract the two that we don't want to talk about, or the three. Um, and I, was, I started this habit of looking at my, my bank statements. And I was also looking at my age, and they didn't go together very well. You're supposed to have a certain amount of money at a certain time. And so I decided I needed to get a real job. I, um, my brother calls me a scrapper. Um, I started as a lawyer, and I quit to become an actor, um, which sort of improv comedian, you know, writer, storytelling coach. So I was sort of downwardly mobile. Um, so it was time to grow up and get a job. So I, I uh, got a suit out and I found a job. And the great thing about this particular job is that it combined my skills. I got a job working for one of these uh, judge TV shows. <laughs> That's right. I could be a lawyer and I thought maybe the bailiff will die and I can be on camera and be his, take his place. Um, but my job was actually to do the legal research for the judge and to you know, give her some legal, legal advice. They actually did have, they, they cared that much about that. So, um, <laughs> not, I know, really shocking, yeah, if you'd ever watched one. Um, so it was a cool, it was cool. And, it, and, it, and I was excited because it was gonna be, it couldn't be any harder or weirder than my previous law job, which was, um, it kind of made tax law look interesting. I was, uh, did regulation of public utilities. <laughs> I just love that people laugh at that because you're just like, that sounds terrible. It is terrible. It's really <laughs> terrible. Like, no, I can't help you with your divorce. Do you need a public utility regulated? <laughs> I can help you with that. Um, super boring, all graphs, all engineering, nothing to do. So, um, so yeah, so my, again, uh, so I, I go into the job and I'm excited. Um, I have this office in the basement and I'm happy with that because I like basements. I like to do my little research. I like to hunker down and do my research. And, uh, so that's what I would do. I would, I would, they, the, um, they would bring it. So these were small claims cases. So one of my jobs was to call, the, the producers would go to small claims uh, court, courthouses across the country, Milwaukee, Detroit, wherever, and they would find these cases and they would find these individuals that they thought would be good on camera and interesting cases and it was going to be easy law because it was going to be stuff like contracts. Did you break the contract? Personal injury. Did you hurt the person? Did you do this or did you not do this? Easy stuff. So I was psyched. And um, I would do my little research and um, the, they, the cases themselves were the producers would bring in these like 12 page memos which would have all of this, they, they called them case summaries but I think that was rather generous because in fact it was something like, it, let's say in Milwaukee the case would be Smith versus Jones. Well by the time it got to the judge show it would be that Hooters ho owes me dough. This is a true name of a case we had. <laughs> Another case we had was called You Peed, I Paid. <laughs> and that was the story of, I believe it was a woman who was suing her cousin because he peed on her keyboard. Fair enough, I think she deserves compensation. Um, let's see, what was another one? I'm not your bosom buddy. Um, that was a woman who was suing her ex-husband who had told her that he would pay for her, her uh, surgical enhancement of her, her boobs and, uh, because he'd requested that, and that seemed fair to me too. So, so I was the good guy in this scenario. I was going to look through the law and I would find what the truth was. But the cases, the case summaries, um, they were like 12 pages long, and they were all in bold caps, and they would have crucial information, like, like say the Hooters Ho case. You know her? It's, it's like that was my friend. Um, the Hooters Ho case, um, if I can remember qu correctly, it was the woman, the plaintiff said, I am suing her um, because she smelled bad and she was smoking and then she would blow the smoke into her, her young daughter's face and she cared more about her boobs than she did about her daughter and she was filthy and not a good roommate and she never paid rent because that was the, the owes me dough part. And then, of course, the, the hoe, 
would was would 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 say things like, "Well, I the only reason I moved in with you for the first place is because you said you had cancer and I was coming to take care of you, and it turns out you lied about the cancer." And and then there'd be a surprise witness, and the surprise witness would come along and say, "Well, did you know that the fake cancer lady actually had an affair with the postman, or maybe it was the neighbor?" But here's a DNA test. And I'm like, this has nothing to do with the law. <laughs> I have to find the law. There's 12 pages, and, and there's like one little paragraph, because all we care about is, did you agree to pay the rent or not? I have to find the truth of this. But this was my job. And so I would actually, I would research, if it was Detroit, I would research, research, where's Detroit? What? Uh, Michigan, thank you. I would research Michigan. <laughs> I, wherever it was, I would look at a map, and I would find that state, and I would research because I cared, and I was going to save the day. And I'd write up a little memo, and it would sit on the judge's desk, and then when it came time, so, so you know, I would kind of half watch the show, right? But, but when she came down to the ruling, she would say, oh, well, looks here, it looks like the hoe owes her dough. So that would be good for me. Um, and then there were moments in the middle of the show, because I have the closed circuit TV in my office, and she'd suddenly go, we need to have our legal department look into that. And I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> so I'd, I'd research it, and, and, and it was cool. It was really, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, in spite of all this, I was bringing justice to court TV. <laughs> and then one time, one day, the, um, there was a guy above me. Our legal department was two people. And he was senior to me, so he had more important stuff to do, and he went on vacation. So they said, you get to do Chris's stuff. And so Chris got to be in like the control room, and he got to go to the executive producers' meetings and all that kind of stuff. And so I was like, great, I'll do that. Sure, I like to learn things. But what Chris also did was he would go meet with the plaintiffs, the defendants. Uh, they seemed like more like contestants to me, but, um, <laughs> and he would, he would welcome them, and uh, the, the would-be, you know, deadbeats and the uh, DNA people and the uh, so on and so forth. And I was excited to meet real people and um, they, were, they were charming. They were excited for their free trip to New York and they had a basket of fruit and they brought their cousins and their friends and all this stuff. And they were excited. It was, it was early in the 15 minutes of fame time and, and, and I was, you know, there to support them. However, um, my job was actually to get them to sign release forms. And when I looked over the release forms, I saw how they were giving basically all their rights away. It didn't matter what they said, if they accidentally accused the postman and maybe, you know, I'm like, you're going to have to go back to your town and they're going to edit this. And I, I would hand them the paper, but inside I was just thinking, oh, don't sign this. Run, run, run. You don't need to be here. It's not that. It's not worth it. But I couldn't say that because it's my job. And they wanted to be there anyway. So they would sign these things and they would happily go on the show. And, and um, I, I guess I did a good job at this because when it came to the end of the season, they had another new ju judge show because we need a lot more judge shows. And um, they asked me if I wanted to be like, I have a senior position now. Like I was moving up the ladder, right? And they're, they're taking me into the executive producer meetings. And I'm like, oh, and I, I'm getting glared at by somebody else. One of the other women executive producers like glare. And there's nothing weirder than getting glared at for a job that you don't really like. <laughs> like I, you're safe, you're safe. I'm not taking over your position, I promise, you're safe. So um, I declined and I, I went back to my, my scrapper life. Um, and my couch and, and my various ways of making money. And a um, couple of months after that, I got a call from, um, I guess, the aunt of a friend of mine who was considering going on the show. And she wanted to know, she wanted my honest opinion about whether I thought she should do it or not. So I finally get a chance. I'm not working for the company. I have no obligation. I finally get a chance to say what I'd been burning and wanting to say so badly is, I said, you know, Gosh, it's, she said, well, you know, I had this contractor come over to my house and he messed up on the cabinets and he did a terrible job and he was never on time and, and you know, he didn't even finish it, so I think I'm right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you're probably right, but don't do it. <laughs> I would not do it. If I, uh, personally, I wouldn't go on the show. I wouldn't let somebody I love go on the show. I just, please, just don't go on the show. And she thanked me for my advice. She seemed to really appreciate it. And I hung up and I thought, ah, good, you know, I'm back to the justice again. I'm back to helping people. And, um... A few months later, she called me back, and she said, uh, I went on the show. <laughs> and she said that they made her look terrible, 
and she was humiliated, embarrassed, and she could barely raise her head in her town, and, and would I be her lawyer? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I saved myself, but I couldn't save her. <laughs> I can't save everyone. Thank you so much. Gail Thomas, everyone. Woo!